All right, hey, Hope City, uh, we're back with a devotional here. We're going to be in Psalm 2. And so we got Pastor Phil, Pastor Matt, Pastor Kevin, and myself. And uh, yeah, we're going to work our way through Psalm 2. So I'm going to read it here. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says this, why are the nations so, and I should actually say beforehand that um, this was a psalm written by David, um, and it's a messianic psalm, meaning it's talking about ultimately Jesus. Um, it's it's based in his in history, but it's talking about the coming of Jesus as well, just to give a little context. And so it says this, why are the nations so angry? Why do they waste their time with futile plans? The kings of the earth prepare for battle. And the rulers plot together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Let us break their chains, they cry, and from slavery to God. Who rules in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. Then in anger, he rebukes them, terrifying them with his fierce fury. For the Lord declares, I have placed my chosen king on a throne in Jerusalem, on my holy mountain. The king proclaims the Lord's decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today, I have become your father. Only ask, and I will give you the nations as your inheritance, the whole earth as your possession. You will break them with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. Now then, you kings, act wisely. Be warned, you rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with reverent fear and rejoice with trembling. Submit to God's royal son, or he'll become angry, and you'll be destroyed in the midst of all your activities, for his anger flares up in an instant. But what joy for all those who take refuge in him. Hmm. Jam-packed. Lots of things to work through here, but is there anything that stands out to, uh, to one of you? Go ahead, Kevin. Give us your thoughts, dude. Yeah, I mean, for... Uh, my, my favorite verse here is verse 8. Uh, Ask and I will give the nations as your inheritance, the end of earth as your possession. And there's a lot of things about prayer that I do not understand. A lot of things about, uh, yeah, how, how God responds to, to our requests and to our interactions with him that I don't get. But I'm convinced, and this verse I think speaks to it, is that I think God has a lot more for us than we think to ask for, than we think to I think that we need to to ask bigger prayers of God and and ask for the things that uh, that are in His will. Like, um, I mean, w we believe that God wants us to to reach our city, and so God, we we're going to continue to pray for our neighbors, and we're going to continue to pray for our coworkers, and and we're in a new reality. So how how can we, you know, be a part of uh, our city being reached for 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 Christ? Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Um, the way my brain reads these things is, um, you know, when, when you're looking at, um, you know, verses four, five, six, and then and then you come down to verse 12 and it's just like, you know, the Lord's wrath and his anger. And then, you know, verse 12 in my version says, kiss his son or he will be angry and your way will lead to your destruction for his wrath can flare up in a moment. But it's like the last verse of the of the psalm says, but hey, blessed if you follow me it's okay <laughs> you know it's all these yeah, things and yeah. if you're reading you're like whoa man like God, god's wrath and it's like but it's cool just bless if you're with me it's all it's awesome so, yeah <laughs> i love okay. that i've been i've been actually reading a lot about um i don't want to suck the joy out of whoever's watching this life but i've been reading about god's wrath lately you know throughout revelation and i'm in, in the beginning of isaiah right now too and it's this it's the thing that we don't necessarily think about all that often at least i don't really think mm -hmm. about all this often but without understanding God's wrath, it's super hard to understand, I mean, salvation and, and why we need why we need Jesus. And so, you know, it's this reality that um, following Jesus just isn't like a good decision for your life or one of, you know, many good options. It's like you, you got to do it like you, you got to you got to make that decision to follow Jesus, because that's the only place where life is but anyway what are yeah. your thoughts? you know i look at this and for me specifically i like maybe just building on what you said there pastor matt it's just the whole dynamic of god rules the world god rules everything that goes on in the world his nation the nations are part of his you know orchestrating what's happening and i think like even what's happening right now god god's in control God's running this. God knows what's going on. Uh, I love the warning given. Okay, serve the Lord with fear. And my version says rejoice with trembling. So there's this dynamic of, okay, 
God is in control in the midst of all this. And it is, like you said, a, a, um, a portion of his wrath coming on the earth. You know, we see some of that even in this. And then he just says, take refuge in me. Take refuge in me. Like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. This is going on. I'm running the earth. Be wise. And the, the, the words be warned. And then he says, yeah, but just take refuge in me. And refuge just means to hide in me. Take your comfort in me. Take your space in me. Relax in me. And I think so often, you know, for our church, it's like, guys, yeah, we look around the world. We see this. We see what's going on. But just relax in God because that's where you can just find that true contentment. That's what really stood out for me here. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it, I think I was talking to you the other day, Pastor Phil, about how this season is just going to reveal what you put your trust in, right? Or what totally. you have been putting your trust in. And um, this is going to sh shake a lot of people, right? And just this encouragement from the Lord, you know, um, you know what it's yeah. like to, to put your trust in some something else. Now, now come back and put it in me. Yeah, that's powerful. I uh, what stood out to me was actually verse three. I, I didn't, you know, I was going to leave it, but no one, no one got there. I just thought that was so interesting. Where, you know, my version says, um, "It's people crying out, let us break um, their chains." They cry and free ourselves from slavery to God, you know. And I just, you know, I have friends that um, don't understand, you know, why I believe the way I believe or don't get it, and they see it as something that is. Um, oppressive in your life um, and I mean just this reality that everybody everybody worships or every, everybody serves something you know um, you know a lot of times it's just their own desires that they serve you know but we're not we're most free when we're serving God like that's when we're most free just like a fish is most free in the water not out of the water right uh, or a tree is most free in soil you know we talked about that in Psalm 1 right um, not being uprooted from soil, you know, person is most free when they're, when they're rooted in, in God and it's not a, mm. not a slavery thing. And so, um, anyway, just a interesting thought, but yeah, I agree that that's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Guys, I miss working with you face to face. You're all so pretty. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm going to pray for us here. Um, Jesus, we, uh, we bring our lives and we bring our church before you. Uh, Lord, we pray that just as Paul said in Galatians 5, that uh, it is for freedom that Christ has brought us free. Is That's where you desire us to live. And, and freedom means um, that we're able to be the way that you created us to be, that there is safety, that there is refuge, that there is trust. And so, uh, Lord, we pray that over our church, Lord, that all of the, the false things that we've put our, our hope in, um, Lord, that would be so clear to us, and that just be this returning to to you. Um, Lord, we do trust you in this time. Lord, thank you, thank you. Praise your name. Amen. Amen. All right, Hope City. See you next time.